friends, this is Beju Baker. I'm Maria. I get this letter from Brian in Wisconsin, an email, and Brian asks me, so do you just bake or do you really know how to cook? Brian. Brian. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Now I'm feeling very kind of red today. Red wine, red meat, and I'm not a big steak fan. Steak is something, if I have it once a year, I'm good. Because I never really find a place that does it for me. I, I get that that's the huge staple for many people and that's so cool and I'm so jealous when I see this beautiful steak put on the plate in front of you. But it just it, it's just not for me. But every once in a while, I want a really good steak. So I'm going to show you a meal and <laughs> mostly I can't wait to eat it. And it's steak. Um, I've got my mise en place for, it, uh, for some of this. There are several components to this video. I've got, um, <laughs> I have to make some sexy salt. Uh, you'll, you'll see, and remember I always say, anytime you can add flavor, add flavor. So I'm going to add flavor to my flavorer. It is a beautiful thing. Check it out. Oh, this beautiful, beautiful, sexy salt, I'm telling you. You just put everything in the food processor. It doesn't matter the order, it doesn't matter. You wanna use pepper instead of peppercorns, knock your socks off. The lemon zest is fantastic. It dries up because of the salt, so you don't have to worry about moisture. Just whisk, whisk, whisk. Keep it in an airtight container, and you're good to go. right? And so you can use less, like I said, you can use less of this because there's so many other flavors and the longer it sits and marinates, then the stronger the flavors get. So this is going to be used often in, in this meal. It's used often in most of my meals. Um, don't use it for baking. <laughs> Two separate salts altogether. Um, but for cooking, you, you want this. And it's super easy. Whatever you like. If you like it, put it in there. If you don't like it, don't put it in there. Um, the second component is to top my steak, I'm going to make this amazing rosemary infused red wine butter, uh, compound butter. I know. I know. Here, check this out. Okay, you're going to take a half a cup of red wine and a sprig of rosemary and just reduce it to half. Just keep it going and reduce it. You're going to cool it. I have it on a big plate because I want it to cool faster. I'm going to add that to some soft butter and just mix the kabooties out of this thing. You're going to be thinking that they're not going to combine and some of it won't. Some of it you're going to just put aside. But you can see it changing color. You're, you're trying to add moisture to, to butter which just doesn't always work, but if you're tenacious, you're going to end up with a great treat. So remove what doesn't get mixed and stir in those little pebbles. They look like little beads, but they're just uh, the wine that hasn't been smushed in. So smushy, smushy. Okay, now you can just put it in a bowl and scoop it out as you need to, but you know me. I'm going to make a presentation is a huge thing for me. So I'm going to take this butter. It's so soft and pliable. It's fun to play with. I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it in a pastry bag with just a, um, and just a regular old star tip. And uh, fill up the bag with it.
Then I'm going to take a cookie sheet and um, with parchment paper, just a small one, because this is not going to make a whole lot. Um, and I'm just going to make some little rosettes on the cookie sheet to let it get firm. So when you're done, just put it in the refrigerator and let it get uh, firm. You can do this days ahead of time. Right? I told you that stuff is flavor, 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 flavor. Now the one thing I didn't do on on that I that I would have usually done um, that wine that was not incorporated into the butter, I would have saved that to use it somewhere in this meal. Um, I didn't. Nothing's lost. So I'm all right with that. But the first thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get, get these um, rainbow potatoes in the oven. So that again is as simple as can be using my sexy salt. That's all I need in olive oil. So check this. Out. Okay. So my mise en place are just these beautiful rainbow potatoes. They're petite. They're, they're not going to take as long to bake, obviously. And I'm ordinarily I would do this all in the pan. I'm only going to do this in the bowl this time because I don't want my fingers to get dirty while I handle the phone. <laughs> that's that's it really. So I'm just going to put in some oil and on this, yeah, it's it's some. And I like a lot of oil because I like it to kind of crisp up the edges. I'm going to add a pretty good amount of this sexy salt and some parsley. That's it, baby. Man, that smalt, that smalt. The smalt is not good, but that salt is really awesome. All right, and I'm putting it all in here, and I, I gotta tell you, do you not love foil? <laughs> I love foil. I'm getting all of this. I put it in there, I wanna use it. Blech. All right, they're all coated really well, which is what I want. I'm gonna keep them kinda together right in the middle. They're good. They're gonna go in the oven, for about 25 minutes at 450. You're so high. <laughs> I'm so low. <clears throat> okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prepare my steak. Um, this is a reverse sear. Now when you sear something, what you're doing is you're getting the pan super hot, the oil super hot. You're putting the meat in there dry and you're sealing all those juices in. You're not cooking it, you're just covering the top and the bottom, depending on how thick it is and the sides. This is not, I'm not doing the sides on this. This is just, this is a petite sirloin. Although I don't know where they're getting petite because this baby's big, so whatever. So you're gonna sear it and then put it in the broiler for about six minutes on each side. This is kind of reverse. I'm going to bake it first, dry, um, six minute on each side, take it out. I'm going to pat it with paper towels to dry it again. And then I'm going to put it in that hot pan to sear it. It's amazing that that switch makes such a difference. It's so tender that way. I mean, it, it's tender the other way, but there's, I'm, I'm just saying it's, really good. So the first thing I'm going to do is dry the steak. All right. You can see, you can see that I got it pretty good already. Now, here's the weird thing. I'm going to put some of the, my sexy salt on this baby on both sides and salt will pull out moisture. So I'm going to let it sit for a minute and then pat it dry again. When I'm done, I'm going to stick it right on there just like it is, put it in a um, broiler six minutes on each side, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so my steak is, is sitting aside so that the water can be released, dry it, seal it, and go. Now I'm going to do the um, pomegranate balsamic glazed onions. 
And I'm only gonna do half an onion. Half an onion seems good. This is the kind of dish that, that, and I'm telling you what, I'm only making one steak because it's just me. It's just me. And I kind of really wanted to pamper myself a little bit. And this is how I do it. All right. And I'm just doing it in slices. This will go right on top of the steak. All right. That's set aside. And the glaze. Okay, so these are the rosettes that I made. And they're firm. They're nice and firm. Which is why you would put them in a, the uh, uh, refrigerator. Just like butter. So I'm going to use two of these. And just let that melt. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of, I have garlic infused oil. Just gonna add a little bit in there, vegetable oil, that's all it is. I'm gonna let this get hot. Such a pretty color, <laughs> it really is. So once this gets nice and hot, I'm gonna add the onions. All right, that's good. I had to test that. And I'm just gonna put them in. I decided to use the whole onion because there's so much flavor here that I'll definitely use it in another dish. All right. So they're going to uh, cook now on medium to low because I want to saute them. I don't want to burn them and I'll just let them sit. Okay, so the rest of the the rest of the meal is going to be prepped over here and cooked over here. I get a better fire. I like the convenience of the other stove top, but this is just better. So I'm getting a good soft glaze on it. I'm getting some sexy salt. I'm telling you, I use this on everything. And I'm just going to let it cook for just a bit. Now, this is where you would put it on really low and cover it and just let it macerate and just get tender and sweet and delicious. But I'm going to do that after I add. Now, they do have the pomegranate and balsamic. Now, they do have a pomegranate balsamic vinegar um, made. I don't have that, so I'm going to make my own. And I really like the, um, the taste of balsamic vinegar with steak. So I'm really going to, I'm going to drink, I'm going to use all that. <laughs> it wasn't whole. It was only about maybe a quarter of the jar. When balsamic vinegar reduces, it gets to be this amazing glaze. There are times when I'll just reduce a whole bottle of balsamic vinegar, um, with just a tiny bit of water and reduce it. Oh man, that smell. And it makes a beautiful glaze by itself on fish or chicken or steak or whatever. And then I'm gonna put in maybe about a quarter of a cup of pomegranate juice. And this is just going to cook until it reduces. I know, what a weird concept, right? But oh my gosh, it's yums. All right, let's let it rest. Okay, that's bubbling in the background and just making my nose and my tummy very happy. Onto the steak. Okay, um, I let it sit. I let the, the salt pull whatever liquid is out the water. It's really just the water. And then I'm going to pat it dry and put it in a broiler. So can you see how much... See, that's, that's what I get. <laughs> Okay, can you see all that? It was very dry when I when I patted it. That's good, that's what I want. Patted it, I patted it. <laughs> Don't you judge me. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna turn it over, pat it dry again. 
put on a magic and pop it in the broiler. Okay, the potatoes are done. Oh, beautiful. Okay, note to self. 450 is a whole lot hotter than 350. So when you open that oven, give it time to breathe before you stick your face in there. I think I melted my eyelashes together. <laughs> they're not even big. That was hot. <laughs> that was stupid. Okay, they're done. they're done. Now, ordinarily, I would just put it in a dish and cover it and let the steam continue to cook it gently. Um, I'm just going to wrap it back up in its own foil. Gently, because I do know how to learn a lesson. <laughs> and I'll keep whatever oil remains, I'll leave it there. And that is really great flavored oil if you want to use it for something else. Still hot, Maria. <laughs> Still hot, dummy. Okay. That's perfect. You can even hear the sound change as it gets thicker. What a beautiful topping for a steak. All right, that was six minutes on the first side in the oven. Step back. You want to go where your heating element is electric, so the heating element elements on the bottom. Oh. Six more minutes. Alexa, set the timer for six minutes. <laughs> Do you know how to check redundancy for steak? Um, they've got these phenomenal tools and thermometers and tricks and, you know, infrared this and that and wow. But um, this is what you use. This is what you use to figure out how much, uh, what you, how you want your steak. You use your finger. It's a knuckle test. Do you know this? <clears throat> if you don't, um, put your hand just relax like this. This part right here, that's rare. When you feel your steak that feels like this, that's rare. Take it to the next knuckle. That's medium. Do it right now. You can feel the difference in the tendon. And then take it, make a fist. That's well done. You don't want steak like that. I don't want steak like that. Maybe you do. Oops, sorry. So that's, that's the uh, knuckle test. Okay, so in three minutes, it's gonna be done. I'm gonna take that time to get this pan hot. Almost like, you're gonna see smoke. You want it that hot. I know, right? It's scary and it's like, ah, but that's what's going to sear, especially after it's been cooked. So in three minutes, I'm going to take it out. I'm going to pat it again, and then I'm going to sear it. And I, for my steaks, I like to use my um, well-seasoned cast iron skillet. Um, you got to love a good seasoned cast iron skillet anyways, but for this, it's perfect. You can also use a cast aluminum. Those are, those are great. Those are great heat conductors. I've never owned a copper, so I don't know. They say, I don't know, this works, and my aluminum works, so I learned it, aluminum. I do know English, I do. <laughs> I do, just not now. Um, so I'm gonna get this going on high. I'm gonna get a lot of smoke, and it's gonna just make a sound like, you know, <laughs> Some big rock star was standing on stage and everyone's clapping. I'll tell you a funny story while, while this is getting hot. When I was a little girl and we had to make beans, um, everybody had a job and beans was, was mine always. And so I'd get the oil really hot and then I'd put fresh cooked beans into that so I can smash them. Water in hot oil just sizzles the heck all over the place. So I'd put it in and now it just, it sounded like an audience was just clapping for me. So it's like, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't judge me. 
All right, this is gonna go fast. So I've got the steak here. I'm just gonna take off the, you can see this pan's <laughs> fired up, baby. And away we go. beautiful. It gets covered. It's going to sit for just a few minutes and I'm going to go plate. Okay, I'm going to take these potatoes and I'm just going to slice them right in half. So tender. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Okay, right, right. We ready? <laughs> Are we with you with me here? Oh man, oh man, oh man. I can taste, I can taste, I can smell that salt. That's all, that's all I'm gonna do for now. I'll get the rest of it later. <sighs> Beautiful. You go to all that work to make this beautiful steak, this beautiful dinner, the steak. Let it sit for five minutes. Fight temptation to cut into it, because when you cut into a steak that has not set, you're going to release all those juices and it's and the moisture and the flavor. You're going to miss the whole purpose of the steak. So fight the temptation, let it sit, go walk around for a few minutes. Five minutes is a good time. Um, and then it's cool enough to, to eat. Um, really, really, you guys, if you cut into it now, you're just going to... It's just not going to matter. So, um, I mean, it's going to, it's going to make a difference. Anyways, so two more minutes left. Got this beautiful rosette just waiting to be placed right on top. It's going to start melting. Okay, so I got the butter on there. That's just oozing down so nicely. And I'm just going to put the onions halfway on top just because I don't want to hide that beauty. Oh my god, the flavors. And this paste. That is a nice dish. My favorite part. I'm going to dig into this. I'm going to cut bigger just because I want you to see the inside. Oh, that's, that's nice. I like it. Well done. Sometimes, once in a while, I'll have it medium rare, but for the most part, I'm a well done kind of girl. And I know that most people love the gristle. That's not my cup of tea. That's all right. But I'm going to slather it in this beauty. What a waste some made people think, right? I... Sorry, guys. Mmm. 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 That butter. Mm. That butter is so good. Mmm. See, that's not... That's good. It's tender. 
I don't like steak because I sit and chew one piece for... <sighs> oh yeah, this is good. The potatoes. Look at those are the funnest things to, to put on a plate, right? A lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. And then this, the onions. Well, it's onions. You know, sometimes you guys, you just have to treat yourself for all that you do that goes unnoticed. This is for you. Okay, my friends, until next time, happy baking. Ah, that was fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe.